What up, though? What's up? How are you doing? Good, good. I know we were just going to do a quick little intro and then go to the go to the other thing. Hello, everybody. How many do Hi, we have everyone. on? One? I think we only have like one on. I don't know. No, Tommy J. Tommy J's in the house. Tommy J, when are you coming to Thailand? Can you tell me that? All right, Mark's on now. Well, everybody, welcome to the show. Ben, any any uh, thing to say? Yeah, well, let's get into that. Let's intro the show today. So we've got basically our normal roundup of some news going on. It's going to be a tourist-focused edition of news. Um, and then, obviously, we've got somebody on that handles security on a cruise ship. So I think that there might be some interesting stories there on people tripping around the world and maybe tripping over other things. So we'll discuss that as well. So let's um, let's kick All it right. off, man. And I think we may have a special guest on later, possibly live from a cruise ship. We'll see if he can, uh, if he can get a signal. All right. right, Ben. Welcome so to the how, show, everybody. Well, yeah, I'll just introduce so, us real quick because in case it's somebody's first time, I'm Greeny and I'm retired in Thailand. I looked all over the world for a place to retire and due to some unseen, unforeseen circumstances, I ended up in Thailand and uh, so I'm kind of an expert at being retired and just living my life, my way, being free and doing whatever I want to do anytime I want to do it. Ben is a professional here in Thailand. Tell tell everybody a little bit about yourself again. Yeah, so basically I'm working so I can become just like Greeny. No, I'm, I, uh, I have a background. I'm from Australia, lived in Australia for a long time, transitioned into the U.S. for, for university, um, worked there, and now I've been living and working in Thailand for 11 years. So I'm kind of right in the middle of things. So I guess a good contrast to... To Greeny. So together we're here to answer any questions that you guys might have, obviously, about retirement. I'm not an expert on that, but I can definitely help you with the um, moving abroad and working, uh, et cetera, uh, family, all these other types of things. And, and of course, property. Right. Uh, well, that's why I really, you know, that's why we're doing this is I really hope at some point we can do some, some real Q&A sessions with people, you know, as this picks up a little bit more and we have more people, you know, viewing in live, um, some unbiased because we're not, you know, this is not a sales show for you. <laughs> However, they can get in touch with you. But I want to do like honest question and answer stuff eventually about renting, buying, you know, people have a mm -hmm. lot of questions. I get so you, you read some of the questions that people ask. And I really want to get into that on this podcast eventually and bring in different guests that have an expertise in, in different fields. You know, people have asked me a lot about financing in Thailand. It's just many different things, but we'll get into that later. That no, that's not what this show is about. This one. And I, think, and I think it's very good green that you said, I mean, obviously our agenda in doing this show has nothing to do with, that that's just a very important component of moving abroad regardless of where you're going to be right right so, you're going to live somewhere permanently and uh <laughs> you know the goal is to bring in people from all over the world you know be it you know i got a lot of subscribers that live in mexico you know right now but they they've been to thailand they're into the thailand content but you know they're living in mexico and different places like that costa rica so hopefully we'll get some guests on in the near future that have some expertise in some different parts of the world. Anyways, we have some news. What did you want to talk about as far as uh, updates about Thailand, I guess? Well, I mean, I think this is the this is like the biggest time of the year in Thailand, right? So a lot of people abroad. Well, I'll t first off, the great thing about Thailand is they celebrate every holiday here. So Christmas, Hanukkah, uh, East, obviously we just had Easter, etc. But the big one in Thailand is obviously Songkran, um, and I'm not sure. Obviously, people have you know been to Thailand, maybe that are watching now. But for those that haven't, essentially, this is the Thai New Year period. So this is the time where 
business shuts down, um, people travel back to their home countries, gridlock is everywhere. So I, I highly recommend not driving if you're going far. But it's a but it's a water festival, so it's extremely festive. It's it's an amazing time if you've never done it. So literally, there are water fights um, that happen on the streets. Um, there's elephants kind of rolling around. I mean, Greeny, and we've been through it before, so you know we 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 might like to sit it out. But it, it's a very festive time. It, it's something that I had looked forward to for a long time because my first two years here, there was no Sankran. I mean, it was okay, wash your feet, go to yeah. temple. Everything was canceled. The water festivals. And I was so fired up last year it was my very first year that I actually attended it in uh, Pattaya, Pattaya. Ground zero. Yeah. And, I, you know, been there, done that. Now, I don't, I, I have no urge. I did it one day and I have no urge to do it again. But some people love that. They want to see it, you know. Absolutely. And, you know, the thing about this year that's kind of special is I guess Thailand is, um <laughs> you know, kind of wanting to make a big splash, no pun intended with, with that comment, but there's the World Songkran Festival this year. So normally, you know, the main Songkran Festival is like from the 13th to the 15th. So it's like three days. And then right. each, prov each, each province kind of has an extra day. But, um, but this year, they're basically doing it from April 1st to the 21st. That, that's not necessarily the water, but in terms of the actual spirit of Songkran, they've extended it. Um, right. And there's some big players, you know, Central Department Store, which is obviously the big department store chain over here, like Macy's in the US or whatever you want to say. I mean, that they're the dominant yeah, player. Yeah. They're going to spend 400 million baht on their Songkran festivities across their network. Uh, and they're planning a thousand, 1,000 events uh, over the Songkran period. So really? I thought that was, really? yeah, that was pretty nuts, you know. Well, I got some good well, news. All right. I'm echoing. Why did I echo? Lay, lay it on us. Uh, free access to the motorway, no tolls. <laughs> okay. So, so that's huge for me. Uh, April 11th to the 17th, there will be no tolls. And I'm sure if some people uh, watch my channel regularly, you know, I said that I was uh, kind of relocating a little bit to Bangkok, which I just got back today because I don't know about this internet signal, but in this condo that I had in Bangkok was terrible. So I had to drive back here to uh, Jong Tien to do this live show with you. So Dedication, Greeny. I love the dedication. All right. What else do you got, mister? Yeah, no. So I was, you know, in the course of my normally normal daily activities, today was a little bit of a crazy day, which is why I'm wearing a still a collared shirt at 1030 at night. But um, but came home. You know, it's it's nuts. Um, Thailand has really bounced back since this COVID issue. Um, and I was reading just this morning when I woke up, actually, that Thailand so far since January this year. How many how many tourists do you think have been in Thailand since January of this year, Green? What would you say? Since January? Yeah. I'd say, um, I'm going to guess about, I think they wanted 30 million for the year. So I'm going to guess about 11 million. Mate, I'll tell, that's a little under that, 9.4 9. million. Okay. 9.4. But keep in mind, this is like, I guess you're coming out of high season, transitioning to low season. Right. But the good news is that they are expecting close to 40 million tourists this year, which okay. is on par with, uh, with, with the record that was, um, that was set just prior to COVID. So really, I think it's really? Good. yeah, I think it's good stuff. I, 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 I did a post today about the resilience of Thailand. So if you look at, you know, how Thailand's fared through things like the Tom Yum Gung crisis of, of like 90, I think it was 97. Uh, where obviously the, the economy crashed. And then you look at the tsunami and you look at the various coups that, that the countries had, like the, 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 you know, the big one with the red and the yellow. Um, Thailand's always bounced back very quickly. So I think that that's something that's quite interesting to note for anybody out there that is looking to come to Thailand because it is like a rubber band, you know? I mean, it's... Um, it, it, oh, it, 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 it's the, number one tourist, it's the number one tourist destination in the world. I looked at a, a chart recently, the top 15 um, most visited places, and Bangkok was number one. Mm. Phuket was on the list. And guess what Guess what other place was on the list? Top 15 places. 
Most Hatia was on that. Hatia? Yes. Yes. That, that surprised me. I didn't, I didn't expect it. Well, let me ask you. So you just got done with a little bit of a stint in Bangkok. How's that mm -hmm. going? I mean, I've lived in Bangkok for, for three, four years previously. Let me How tell you. Been? Let me mm. tell you. The mm. subway, I got some B-roll I took, you know, just waiting. I, I, I mean, I could barely even get in and people couldn't get in. I mean, I haven't seen that that much where, you know, people are crowding into the BTS and some people just can't get in. They got to wait for the next one. So it, it was pretty packed. And that, that you know, Siam, Asok, Sukhumvit, you know, some of those areas. But even I, I rented a condo and I'll, I got a vlog I'll be doing on that. But it's way out. It's four, 35 to 40 minutes, depending on the ride from, from Terminal 21 on the BTS and the MRT. You know, you have to do a little combination. So I, I'm in a real quiet kind of area, but it's still just right at the edge of the city. And even way out there, when I was going back at night, it was packed. I mean, the, the, it was packed, you know. And well, I even saw you, parades out the, there. I'm surprised. How's the flavor differently? I saw that you found, I mean, it's trivial, but I saw you found a coffee shop and you seem to really enjoy the neighborhood coffee shop experience. I mean, the people were enjoying? so friendly. Yeah, it's yeah. not a heavy Falang area. There's some, um, obviously, everywhere in Bangkok now. It's just, you know, everybody's back. But um, they were just so friendly. Like I went outside to take a picture of the front, you know, and then the the uh, um, the grab guy engaged me. And I'm like, oh, you want to be in the photo? He's like, yeah, yeah, take a picture of me too. You know, he's waiting for his order there. And, and uh, you know, they, they roast their own coffee there. They sell to other coffee shops. It's kind of a kind of a cool place, a cool little find. I, I, I looked and there was like 10 coffee shops. That was like a 4.8 on Google. So I, I went there. And it was great. It was good. So, all right, let's. Uh, oh, do you have another news story before we bring uh, our guest on? Because he's no, I think you know, I think that's it. I'm actually looking forward to getting into uh, it on the uh, on the cruise ship angle. I'm, I'm excited. Okay. So, our guest is Ryan. He is a uh, he'll tell, first officer, I guess it would be called, on a cruise line. We're not going to say which cruise line he works on, but um, if you guys are familiar with how that type of career works, you do like. Three months on, three months off, you know, different things like that. It kind of rotates around, and um, it's working out really good for him because um, he's not quite at the age yet to get a retirement visa in Thailand, and he's kind of like half retired in Thailand, half working on a cruise ship. So without further ado, we will bring Mr. Ryan on in just a second. I want to do oh, something. Oh, this is a live show, just FYI. Yeah, I know, but I want to do no, I think I think Paul just asked if this was live or not. Oh, okay, okay, okay. There we go. Now I can bring him on. It, Hello, it's, Ryan. It's live, but they don't look too alive. Look like the old folks <laughs> home up there. Come on, bro. For the amount of money I'm getting paid, I don't have to be nice. Okay. <laughs> let's let's start off the interview because you know we have we we did a little uh, pre-show discussion on some subjects, but. I noticed right at the beginning, one of the uh, the guests um, asked a question, so we will pose it to you. And now, Ryan, you did have a YouTube channel before, like Eat Out Patti or something like that. What was the food channel that you had? Yeah, we did uh, Eat Out Patti. You, you were on there with okay. me for a couple times for the um, for the meetups. Um, also right. had my original channel that I really never concentrated on. Did a few. I I actually renamed it Retire Too Early. Um, because that's basically what I did. I retired too early. And I was actually, fail. Yeah, retirement fail. We won't get into that. We, I saw how Scott got beat up on one of your videos. Um, well, <laughs> ben knows what but you were, you're not even the age. You know, you're not <laughs> even the age. You, you were trying to make it work, and it didn't work. But anyways, the question that somebody posed, and obviously, you know, you're, you're a foodie. I've been out to eat with you a million times, and they asked, do you get to eat on the cruise ship? Like, is that included the food? Like, how does that work for employees when it comes to dining? Um, okay, and I know I think so, you have more perks than a, a, right. a it, housekeeping it, person. Correct. Um, it on average, I was tracking up. It depended on the day. I was averaging ten to fifteen thousand steps a day, and that included taking the stairs, sometimes four and five, six flights of stairs, and. I didn't lose weight, but I didn't gain weight either. So I was keeping still. So I, I think that answers your question. If I was allowed at the buffet, in fact, <laughs> uh, I kind of 
was well known around. Um, I, I was kind of well known around the ship because when you have guests come on, you know, they might be on for seven days, 14, 21 days. And I've been there for a while. So I know kind of the ins and outs on how to navigate and how to marry certain dishes and stuff like that. What's good, what's not good. And I had people coming up to me, Ryan, what should I eat today? I'm like, oh, crap. It, it even got to the it got back to the captain. And I was up on the bridge with the, the captain and the rest of the uh, deck officers. And they're like, Ryan, how much ice cream are you getting into? Because you're pretty well known around the uh, ice cream bar there. We're getting, we're getting guests stopping us going, where's Ryan? We haven't seen him yet. I don't think he's had his ice cream today. And I'm going, Jesus, come on, guys, give me a break here. I only eat ice cream maybe once a day. So it's not just us. Maybe. I mean, the rooming follows, you know, follows you wherever, right? It's not just, yeah, not just so, here. Yeah. Um, okay. But uh, he's clarifying. He says, meant to ask if the guest, whether he likes the buffet food on the cruise. Now I have been in my younger years. I have been on, um, I'm not going to name them because they're actually the parent company of my company. So I don't want to put them down or seem like I'm putting it down. But I think people that have been on that fun cruise that goes out of Florida a lot, and it's known as your five and seven day booze cruisers, the food there is on par with Golden Corral's buffets. Um, when you get into like, um, uh, I've seen the videos with 30 and Wake Up, I believe he's on Princess, if I'm not mistaken. And, and then on my ship, like our buffet is not, you don't go up there and get your own food. They actually serve it to you. Like you go up and say, hey, I would like, you know, a piece of fish. I want that. And so they prepare it. So it's a little higher quality of a buffet food. I mean, uh, I'm hearing from people that, you know, they go on these cruise ships and they they don't have some of the things that we have, you know, on the Lido market for the buffet. So it's, um, yeah, to answer the question and looking at my size, yeah, I like the food and it likes me back a little too much. Okay. How, how long, long have you been, been? Yeah, how long have you been working on cruise ships for? Uh, we don't go by years; we go by contracts. <laughs> and I'm coming up on about my fourth. I'm changing ships now. I'll be on my third ship. So it's it's been right at about four contracts. And a contract is approximately how long? Would you say? It, that varies between varies. it varies between crew members. You have some crew that do eight eight months. Some of them are on for a year. Like we've had guys that have been on the ships. Some of the uh, staff have been on for a year, and um, and then you have some people like uh, I'm coming up. This this next hitch I'm going to do is going to be right over three months. It's going to be a tad over ninety days. And the reason why they're doing that is because I work Christmas and the uh, I work Christmas and New Year's this last year. And with the cruise industry, you have, um, they don't fly there. They stop flying at some point in time because of the price. And they try to keep people at home for the holiday season. Mm -hmm. So I was on the ship for, for Christmas and New Year's this last year. So they, they arranged it to where I'll be off for Christmas and New Year's this year. So I, I have a little bit longer contract this time with a shorter break. I only get about 60, 61 days or 62 days of a break. But when I go back, I'll only do 60 days next time on the following contract. So it it, it really depends. Uh, this, you know, I did a little bit shy of 90 days because I did a quick contract on the contract before. And I've been off for over 90 days now. You know, so normally they like, like to say for me, it's a three and three. But uh, oh, 30 and a wake up got the bad food comment. Um <laughs> But for me right now, it's it's just it all pans out. So there's nothing with cruise ships, just like the schedule. It never is an absolute. It always mm -hmm. changes. And that's the one the advice that I give to people that if you're going on to a cruise ship, be flexible, be very flexible on your itineraries, on your ports, on your travel and just relax. A lot of people there, they try to control the, you know, the flow of water or they're the type A personality. They get on the ship and they want to control everything. It's like, just sit back and relax and just let things happen. You know, you can kind of make them happen, but relax, you know, de-stress a little bit. Don't be the butthead or don't, you know, try to be the boss on the ship. Just sit back and relax, go to your shows, go watch your 
favorite show. Go gamble. Go drink your cocktails. Eat the extra dessert. And if Keep you pampered. really embrace it, it, if you really embrace the cruise life, it will embrace you back. Right. Okay. Uh, ben, you got a few questions. And so just go ahead and get started with those. I got some questions. No, I mean, I want to get into the, the juicy stuff in a way because I'll yeah, tell you. So, I, <laughs> so I've taken one cruise, Ryan, which was back in spring break. I was I went to, to, to Indiana University. So this was probably, mm -hmm. geez, man, like tw 20 years ago. I did a Costa Atlantica. Costa, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, I think, said, yeah. So I did the, the classic seven-day thing where you roll out of Fort Lauderdale. It was, mm -hmm. I think it was Key West, Cozumel, Mexico, Otras Rios, Jamaica, and um, Grand Cayman, something like mm -hmm. that, and then back again. Uh, look, I, I, to be honest, I had a fantastic time. You know, I mean, I think the fact that the buff, like the buffet was, you know, the food was, was great. You know, they were carving up lamb as soon as we got onto the boat, you know, <laughs> and... Um, and I like the, the the fact that you kind of buddy up with people on the cruise ship. You see them for dinner. It's, you know, I can understand why people do it, and 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 I would love to be doing another one. I'm just not sure in Asia really what the experience is like compared to taking a cruise ship from the U.S. or maybe Europe. Well, Ryan's not doing Asia. I mean, uh, you're well, going no, from yeah. North America. You're going from the South Pole to the North Pole, aren't you? Oh, well, damn near. Uh Right now, what people don't realize is uh, during the high season here, a lot of the ships that are in other places, like you can't have, like my company, we have about three or four ships that do Alaska runs, and they're starting about now in April. Prior to them doing the Alaska runs during the off season for Alaska, they were here in Asia and Australia and New Zealand. So you had one making runs in Japan, one making runs around Australia and New Zealand. So a lot of these big cruise ships, like I had a, uh, a friend come into um, Thailand and of course we're doing all the tourist stuff. So I take them down to the sanctuary of truth. And when I'm sitting there, sure enough, you know, uh, sure enough, I see all the little stickers on people's shirts and it's all the ship um, shore tours. And I'm looking in the distance. And when you're at the sanctuary of truth, you can see Lam Shebang. And of course I could see that it was celebrity, uh, celebrity cruises was in port. And I think they told me the day before Princess was in. And then I looked it up on my phone and uh, Holland America had just been there. So you're getting some very, you know, reputable cruise companies that are coming into Thailand and they're all singing, a, a sailing out their home port and out of uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, Japan. So if if you have any reservations about taking a cruise on in this area, I would say no, you, especially you want to try it. Now they're not going to be your booze cruises like you would think in the Med or out of you know Florida. They're not going to be that because it's a different you, it, vibe, dude. It's a different vibe over here. And Greeny, you've been on one, so you can attest to this. It's it's people you're getting a lot of Falongs and a lot of foreigners from you know Europe and Asia and all over the world that may not be able to travel as well as they used to conventionally, like jumping on planes and taxis and stuff. So a cruise is ideal for them. So of course it's going to attract an older crowd, a more reserved crowd. Not yeah. saying that they can't get down and party because I've seen some of the ships and they still have nightclubs, but it, it's not going to be like you were saying, you know, I, when I was young, when I was, cause I did the same thing when I was 24, yeah. 25 and threw up off the back of the ship and, um right. went scuba diving hung over you know they give you they give you the little blessing and you jump right. in the water with your tank and go on your excursions they, let me ask you ron do they like let's say you're taking a a cruise around asia like you said from hong kong or whatever the the case may be do they change the food like the the dining is, is it more is it asian food as opposed indian. to being more Western? well it, i indian. won't say indian you gotta you, you have the up uh, Okay, let me see. I don't want to talk in absolutes. You're well. I just, let me just tell you my experience real quick out of Singapore. Singapore to uh, Kuala Lumpur to Penang to um, uh, Phuket, and uh, yeah, it was it was a lot of. It, they had the menu on the set menu. You know, you could get different things, but the buffet and everything it was very heavy in Indian, you know, Asian, Chinese. And and I would say that over you know the majority of the the, the clientele on the cruise was was that nationality and it's just different yeah. like you were saying no nightclub on the cruise ship it was Royal Caribbean I mean it was a big ship but you know it was just not like 
when I was younger and I went on the carnival cruise, nothing like that, nothing like the booze cruise. So anyways, right. continue. Sorry. So you also have to realize where they're getting their food from. They're getting the food from the ports. So when I was on the ship, this last ship that I was on, I joined in Athens and left. And then when I disembarked the ship, I was in Santiago, Chile, in San Antonio port, but Santiago I flew out of. So we went through the mid, jumped on, and we did the goodbye Mediterranean tour and went across the Atlantic. One of my staples for dinner, believe it or not, was a Caesar salad and a slice of pizza. It was just my go-to. If I didn't want to think, I went up to the Lido market, grabbed a Caesar salad and a slice of pizza. The second that the second that the um, the ship made it into Fort Lauderdale, we had a big turnover. So we're getting a lot of because we're going down to South America. You ain't getting crap down there. So we had a big turnover, you know, for food, supplies, this, that, the other. That night or the next night when I went up there and I had my traditional Caesar salad slice of pizza, I went, holy crap. The pizza got better. Like the dough was better. They had real pepperonis. Why? Because we just got it from American. It was it was the style I was used to. It was American style pizza and pizza dough. So a lot of times the food and the way it's cooked and prepared is going to be based on what port that the ship is actually getting their supplies yeah, from. Wow. So cool. you have to take those into account. If it is an American ship, if it are not an American ship, but a lot of these, you got to realize Carnival owns so many companies. They have like 12 of them. Uh, Carnival Corp owns 12 of the ships, and one of the things that they require by Global Hess is that English is spoken in and amongst the guests. It's it's travel. It's just like the airlines. English is spoken in and amongst, amongst the guests. Um, so the only time that a... A, um, a crew member is to speak a native language or another language besides is if the guest either only speaks that language or if the guest initiates it. So mm. if, if two if two crew members are out and about on the cruise and it's a a um, and it's a cruise company from America, they are supposed to be speaking English. That is a requirement. They all, just about everybody, especially if they work in and amongst the guests, has to pass a certain TOEIC score to be employed. Now, some of the ones down in, like, the garbage room, they're not as stringent on the English language. However, they still have to know English because all the announcements are made in English. And it doesn't matter what flag that you're going on. It, it goes by the company. Now, Costa... Are you talking about before? That's an Italian company. So you're going to get two announcements. You're going to get one in Italian first and then one in English after. So they they play by a different set of rules. So it's it's really dependent on the um, cruise company itself. Okay. okay. All right. So now <clears throat> we'll get a little bit more specific. So you are uh, like the head of security on a big cruise ship. Yes. Okay. So. And you've worked with other people that have been on different cru cruise lines. I'm sure you've heard, you know, stories about this type of line, what happens on this cruise line, because they're all different. They bring different clientele in. And your 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 specific experience that you've had, you, you were telling me recently that they don't even have like a lockup on your cruise ship. Is that, that correct? It depends on the uh, flag. It depends on the country. Whoever is is has the flag of the ship. So some might, and some might, uh, some do not. Some have a brig. Some do not have a brig. However, if it really comes to that, there's a couple options. We always have an inside cabin on standby where we just remove all the stuff out of it. And if we absolutely had to, we could secure a person inside that inside cabin and then post a sentry on the door. If they're belligerent and out of control, you just call the doctor. The doctor comes over there and gives them a nice little go to sleep shot. And that's the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> but luck luckily, we've only getting come close a few times to that. Now, I've heard from other people, and I I came aboard, and they had a special needs person on the ship, and because I watched the video, and and of course I saw the bite mark on the guy that I was replacing. I saw the bite mark on his arm. Of course, I'm laughing at him. He was a retired New York City uh, police uh, detective, and he said he went up to go get his lunch. And someone was yelling, and this lady had brought her 19-year-old um, autistic son with her. 
and he was known for a little, you know, outburst and stuff. And I guess that salt air got him, and he just went nuts and started just attacking people. And he wind up biting the security officer that was on that ship, Jeez. and they had to subdue him. It took a few people, and it, it come down that the doctors had to actually step in and give him a couple of shots of sedatives to actually calm him down and keep him sedated because he was trying to just – well, I, I watched the body cam footage and I couldn't stop laughing, which it sounds bad. And they didn't think it was funny either because there's poor, you know, my, my buddy over there and he's got a big old bite mark. He actually bit through his jacket. And it was I like somebody just, on those, those bath salts or something. That, <laughs> yeah. And, and you see him on the, on the uh, video and he's just doing this. He looks like Jaws just trying to gnaw at him. And I'm going, oh, Lord. I said, Did they so test him for rabies? Uh, well, you would think so. Um, and that's what I said. I said, I guess he wanted a taste in New York. <laughs> so oh, but it, it, it turned in. But you got to realize when we get into port, we have another big ship next to us. We always go to try to find your counterpart because especially if it's a ship that you haven't been on, you might want a little tour of the ship. So you go down there to their gangway and say, hey, you know, where's the officer at? And they usually call him on the radio or on the phone. And he'll come down you shake hands stuff. And, it's, and then you'll, yeah, hey, what about a little tour real quick? All right, come aboard. And so... We'll get on there, and of course, you're telling old war stories. And one of the poor guys that was on a ship when I was in South America that we were we were, um, you know, docked up next to, we were alongside, sharing the same um, dock. They had just done a chartered nude cruise. They had a nudist cruise charter the whole entire ship out. And he goes, you talk about one of the most uncomfortable cruises that he's been on. He says, because everywhere you went, people were naked, except for the dining areas. You know, you had to put on on clothes to be in the dining room. And then you had to, um, um, you know, you know, be clothed to go into any type you know, a show, stuff like that. But out in the hallways, the, you know, around the pool, pool. the hot tubs, everything. He says it was just, you just saw naked people. And then he clarified, he goes, Ryan, it wasn't the naked people you want to see either. Yeah. <laughs> he said it, right. it wasn't yeah. too pretty. He says, he says he couldn't stop laughing though, because they had one of the formal nights and the captain had come down, he said, and the captain had been real uncomfortable with the whole situation, but he was still, you know, being a good host and was putting on his captain's uh, party. And he said, so, and I know what he's talking about. When you get into these formal situations, you kind of scan the room and you try to look for somebody that you think you could tr strike up a conversation with that's not going to be too off the wall or too nuts or any anything like that. He said, so, you know, he said the captain went in there, kind of scanned the room like we all do, looking for somebody to just say hello to and talk to a little bit. And he said he saw this one guy that, you know, look straightforward, look like your account, you know, glasses, the whole nine yards. And he said the captain went up and started talking to him. And it wasn't until about halfway through the conversation because it was a formal, you know, gathering that he realized that he uh, he was wearing assless chaps or assless pants. <laughs> and, and he says, so, of course, there was other people that like snapped the picture from behind of the captain engaged in this conversation with this guy with you know his ass hanging out the back of his pants and he yeah. said you know it's just it looked like your accountant it wasn't a guy that you would think would have assless pants and he said it was you know most of the crews was spent trying to prevent people from going through the manhole covers so so how that, this like works that. then when you do that that type of cruise um because i've seen like the kiss cruise so different organizations or groups can kind of charter a whole cruise ship for like their group and what do they get a percentage of the sales or how, how does that work? That's all on the hotel side and the company side. Oh, okay. Uh, I know that when they charter it now, it costs a good penny, but they basically take the entire ship. Like um, normally with me, I can do a FOB. What is a friend on board? And if they have an extra room or they don't have a book cabin, I can get you into the room uh, at basically what, off the hamsters talking about is is just the taxes and port cost so and you don't have to pay it if it's a chartered cruise and there's open rooms we can't do that i can't do that now i can have them in my cabin like if it's my girlfriend or family i could have them stay in my um uh, uh my cabin but not on a charter they literally have the entire ship to themselves so 
So do you see this question here? Because I don't know. I don't know what that is. <laughs> okay, so you know how when people non-rev on an airplane, you've heard about the airlines non-revving. They don't have to pay the airlines, but they're still responsible for the the taxes for oh, the right. airports and everything. Yeah. It still yeah. works the same way as a um, as a cruise ship. Each cruise that goes in to these ports, they have a port tax and they have all sorts of costs. So you could still get a free cruise a lot of times, but still be required to pay the port fees and taxes. And I think okay. that's what he's asking. And, and the reason why he's saying, look at Carnival, when, I'll just tell you something off the charts that kind of gives you an idea why taxes are 300 plus out of pocket. When we head into Port Canaveral. They don't give us, not Port Canaveral, but uh, Fort Lauderdale. And it goes for a lot of the other ports in Florida. Cruise ships do not have a choice. You get a tug escorting you in. Mm. A tug is escorting the ship in. You know, if you need a tug, like when we were in the Med or we're in South America, the captain could get up and call the port agent and say, hey, listen, you know, the wind's going to be up tomorrow. I want a tug there just in case we need a, a little assistance, you know, coming alongside at least to escort us in if we need him we'll contact the tug captain and ask them to hook up to the bow and, and help us in to the uh, port. If not, you know, just tell them to escort in Florida. You don't get that choice. And it's coming at a price tag of he's going to, even if he hooks to you or not, he's going to escort you in. And it's at a price tag of $20,000 just for the wow. tug. Just how long does that process, how long does that process take? Yeah, the tug guided? comes in. The tug comes in at a different time than the the pilot, and it, it it's all different in different ports. Sometimes when you pick up the pilot, there's sometimes you pick up the pilot miles out. Uh, sometimes you pick up the pilot a day before. We've had pilots because we're going through the fjords and everything. When you talk about pilots and ships and rivers and everything, you want to talk about a, just another can of worms. You think that the um, – the, um, Phuket uh, Taxi Mafia is a thing. This Pilots yeah. Association, you can go from one area to the next, and they have different pilots for everything. We had pilots on board trying to look at the um, the Cape of Good Horn, and you've got the the military or the Navy, which controls the waterways down there, is telling us that we didn't have the right pilots on. And we're like, no, 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 we have these pilots. They're from your country. No, 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 no. That's not the right pilots. You would need these pilots. We're like, whatever, dude, whatever. It, it was good last week. I guess it's not good this week. So we couldn't make an approach to the island and look at the lighthouse. So okay. it, it's, it's just going to change. Um, no, and when you, just difficult. to clarify, when you're talking about pilot, they bring somebody on that that's in control of the boat when it comes into port. Uh, that That is a – Just that like is going a, through the um, Panama Canal type of thing. That is a myth. The captain is always in charge of the vessel. It is the captain. Even in the Panama vessel. Canal? Even in, well, no one's real. Wow. No, he's, oh. still, he's still in charge of his ship. He has right. options on there. But trust me, I was on the bridge for everything. He was still on the sticks. The captain and staff captain, and we had officers in every part of the ship. And I was down at the brakes, and I made my way up to the gangway, and I physically watched because I was on one um, one wing and the two captains were the other. And I was there with the second officer taking uh, taking pictures, of course, looking at it because it was pretty cool. And I'm hearing them yelling right. one meter, three meters. You know, they're giving the countdown. Right. So right. it's um, let's um, let's do this. Sorry. Um, wouldn't it be cool if we could bring somebody on that's like on a cruise ship right now? Like, yeah, it'd be bring nice. another count. That'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? So there's people that actually like to save money in retirement may decide it's cheaper to live on a cruise ship. And I kind of want to hear a little bit about that type of thing. So hello, Kevin. Hey, Can what's going on, guys? Greetings from uh, wow. the Ruby Princess in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Yeah, Princess wow. is a very nice line. So Kevin, um, very short notice, but I appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, yeah and, awesome. uh, it worked out perfect. You said you just pulled into port. 
Yeah, we just pulled into port. We have Starlink on board, but it's not great for video teleconferencing type stuff. You can do it, but I probably wouldn't have done it if we were at sea, but we just happened to be pulling in port this morning and I have T-Mobile, so I get 5G here in Mexico. So uh, okay. worked out Speaking great. Speaking of that Starlink, um, tell I, I took a cruise. Yeah, the one that I just took out of Singapore and I didn't pay for the internet ahead of time. And when I got on there, I could not believe how much money it costs. Now, do you prepay? Do you have some trick to getting uh, cheaper internet while you're on the ship? Yeah, so with the cruise line I'm on right now, Princess, I'm elite, so I get half price internet, but I also oh, cool. get a ton of onboard credit. Um, you, you can get onboard credit on a cruise ship for a lot of different things. One of them is like being a veteran, or like you were a first responder. First responders get the same thing veterans get. Some teachers get it. There's a bunch of of uh, onboard credit you can get. So to be honest with you, usually it's free for me because my onboard credit will cover that cost. So I really don't worry about it. And I'm a YouTuber, so I kind of need it. So I get it. But right. as far as out of pocket costs, it's not that much to be honest with you. After you cruise for a while, it'll become cheaper and cheaper on some cruise lines like Royal Caribbean at a certain level, it's completely free. And so when you first start cruising, it can seem like a big expense, but after, you, after you've been cruising for a little bit, it gets cheaper and cheaper. And if you're doing some, like the next few cruises I'm on, we're pulling into the US, Mexico, or Canada almost every day. And I have T-Mobile, which gives you 5G in all those countries. So if you don't want to watch Netflix at night, then you don't really need it if you're doing that type of cruising. Right, right. So how long have you actively been cruising uh are you know continuously for now uh so you know my youtube channel every year i change the way i, I travel yeah, yeah. I travel a different way every year and i've been cruising full-time with a little bit of a break to hang out with my mother for a little bit over a year now um Jeez. about a yeah about a year and two a year and three months i actually end pretty soon in may i fly to thailand so oh welcome back yeah. yeah, that is awesome. So what's been your favorite like port of call so far? Oh, man, um, probably Tallinn, Estonia. Estonia. Yeah, Ta I don't know if you've ever been to Tallinn, but it's like it's a beautiful city in Estonia. It's, it's what you think of when you think of like old world Europe that you think you might get in Paris or or London. It's what you think of. You, you'll actually get it in Tallinn because <laughs> it's just this amazing city with this like 16th and 17th century architecture. And that's one thing I really like about cruising is cruising can be a little bit superficial in the way you're traveling. But if you take these um, off the off the grid type of cruises, you'll find a bunch of places that you want to go back to. And Tallinn, Estonia is one of those places that I plan to go back to and live for a month or two. I found a bunch of places like that. Obviously, I found Thailand when I was in the U.S. Navy for doing port visits in, in the 1990s. That's how I discovered right. Thailand. Um, right. So um, cruising is a great way to discover places that you can return to later okay. and uh, and do, you know, slow travel in, in my opinion. And how much, time, how much time can you spend? Because, I mean, the one cruise I, I did was literally you're in port for a day, right? So it was like no overnight whatsoever. The cruises that you're taking now, I mean, do you dock for like three, four days or is it faster? No, 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 no. Now, most cruise ships aren't gonna stay overnight. I'm sure your other guests can can give better insight on this, but there's probably a huge risk of staying overnight on a cruise ship. Um, Losing for, people a million the different A million different reasons, um, like, and also probably like the cost of the cruise would go up like insanely because you'd have to pay more port fees. But mm. um, now, normally, no, there are a couple cruise lines that have private islands and sometimes they'll overnight there, like MSC will overnight at their private island. Royal Caribbean usually doesn't, uh, but some, some of them will overnight. So every now and again, you'll get an overnight. Maybe if you're over in Europe, uh, they'll do maybe a, a night or two in a place but normally it's you pull in at eight, you leave by five or six. Mm. Um, at the latest, maybe you'll stay is 10. So, it, I mean, it is like in and out really quick and you're not gonna get like an insane cultural experience. But to me, that's not what cruising's about anyway. It's more about 
the ship life and uh, yeah. and wake, waking up somewhere new every single day. That's the uniqueness of cruising for me. Got it. Wow. Well, that's pretty cool. Where were you coming? Like you're in, where were you before? Where did you just come from? So we, we're actually doing a home port shift. So we were cruising out of Fort Lauderdale, doing a bunch of Caribbean stuff and uh, partial Panama Canal cruises where they go through one of the Panama locks and then turn around and come back through. A lot of people just want to see the locks. And right. so, uh, and, and then you hit a bunch of places in Central America, like Colombia, uh, Panama, places like that. But hurricane season is getting ready to start. So the ship I'm on is repositioning to the West Coast. And oh. we are in, we just went through the Panama Canal, did the full transit. Now we're coming up the coast of Mexico. Then we're going to uh, stop in California, start a new cruise, pick up a bunch of people. And then there's a, we're doing a West Coast wine cruise. So from L.A. to Vancouver, we're stopping at a bunch of places in the U.S. Uh, on the way up uh, to Vancouver. And it basically just it, um, the cruise centers around wine, like stopping at all the places where they make wine in Washington State, Oregon. And, uh, and, That's uh, interesting. California. I've never even heard of that. What's that? I never even heard about that before. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah I that mean, sounds awesome. Back in the day, the most wine in the world came from California for a long time. Not not anymore, but it's still one of the top producers. And also there's also wineries all along the coast in Oregon right. and Washington right. State as well. And then we're then we head over to Hawaii, um, do a cruise from Vancouver to Hawaii. And then my ship starts its Alaskan cruising season. And I'll be on the ship for twenty one days of Alaska. Then I hop on a plane from Vancouver to uh, Bangkok. Okay. How many other folks? How many other folks are, are living this lifestyle, Kevin, okay, on the on the ship you're on? I mean, do do you bump into a lot of, like people that are doing this? Yeah, so there's a lot more than you would think. I mean, there's one guy that's really famous named Super Mario that is that lives on Royal oh, Caribbean yeah. cruise ships, <laughs> and he has like ten thousand days. He's been living on a cruise ship for 25, 26 years, and. Like me, I'm I'm on Princess. I I have like, if you count my Navy time, I have I have years and years of sea time. But if you don't count my Navy time, I have uh, well over 300 days on cruise ships, so almost a full year on cruise ships. And on Princess cruises, right now I have like 240 days, and I'm not even in the top 50 of people with the most cruise days on board this ship. I'm not even in the top 50. There are people on board this ship, this wow. cruise that have. 3,000 cruise days. So if you extrapolate that out, that's like eight to 10 years of cruising, being on the ship, because Princess counts day for day. So um, that, you know, that person has, you know, decades on on cruise ships, like on the cruise ship. Um, right. that, what is your that, as far as like how I'm doing it, like living on the cruise ship, mm. uh, there are, there are, those are fewer and far between, but there are people that spend a big portion of the year on cruise ships, like six to nine months. They'll go visit their grandkids during the spring or the fall when it's a little cooler. And then they'll hop on a cruise ship, depending on what kind of weather they like. Like I like cooler weather, so I'm glad we're heading up to Alaska, but some people want to be down in the Caribbean in the winter, so. Do, do people always have to, tran like, like you may be on, like you said, a 21 day cruise, then like you hop off and you're jumping on a different cruise, maybe on different cruise lines. Do some people like almost have their own room and always stay in the same ship? Or do you always kind of have to transition onto a different ship because some may dock for a little while or, yeah. or get maintenance? So there, I mean, there's two types of people doing what I do and I've done both. I've actually been on this ship for 60 days. I'm going to end up being on this ship for 103 straight days. Wow. And, and so I've had the same room. But uh, which I, I actually like that because then you don't have to. One of the great things about cruising is every morning you wake up somewhere new, but you never have to pack or unpack. <laughs> so if, if you stay on the ship, um, it's a, to me, it's a great way to travel. And um, but for my first probably three quarters of a year, I was doing that. I was staying on a ship maybe a month and then transitioning to a new ship. And to be honest with you, it kind of got... Um, I just I, I just hated the transition days from going from one ship to the other. So then right. I just started looking for cruise ships that had a, a varied itinerary, like they were switching to different parts of the world. And so I started cruising that way where, like I've been on this ship for 103 
103 days total at the end of it, and we'll have never hit the same port twice. So I just found a ship that had a varied uh, itinerary. And All right. So, so for somebody yeah. that wants to do this, Kevin, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm fascinated by people that do that. I mean, you hear about that ship, the world where people have like bought, you know, like condos on like, like apartments on the ship. But yeah. what is the average cost per, I mean, if somebody wanted to do this, what is the average cost per day of cruising in this type of way? I mean, obviously I know it's, you know, route and ship, et cetera, but what is the average out of? Yeah, so that varies wildly, to be honest with you. There's a whole bunch of factors that come into that. You know, whether or not you're cruising alone or you're cruising with somebody or you're, or you're sticking to budget cruise lines like Costa you mentioned earlier or MSC. Um, I ha there's a really, like, my best advice for people is there's a website called Cruise Plum, Plum Like the Fruit, and it is a website that was made by a bunch of people at Google that tra that cruise on their own, and they were tired of not being able to, to get accurate pricing. And so they started this website, and it makes no money. It's just a search engine, and you can, you can search by cost per day. And if you go in there right now and you click that you're going to cruise by yourself solo, you'll, you'll find 5,000 pages of cruises wow. at 100 cruises a page and you'll find about nine pages which is about 900 cruises that are that'll average you about a hundred dollars a day so all in in my opinion you can cruise without any other special deals and you can find a lot of deals for anywhere between three thousand and four thousand dollars a month but remember that's everything that is your food that is your travel that is your lodging that is every everything included and if you're like a gambler, you can cruise much cheaper for that than that, um, because cruises like are just like Vegas comping hotels. They will comp you. I have a whole video about like how I got into the casino system without really losing any money. Um, but that was during COVID, and I kind of got lucky. I'm not sure sure you could do that any longer. But I've been cruising for, I mean, this 103 days cost me like 50 bucks a night, so like 1500 dollars a month. Um, and that's I, food, I, everything. Wow. Yeah, that's everything. That's food. That's entertainment. You know, I mean, that's the great thing about a cruise ship, especially me from an introvert perspective. Like sometimes I feel like going out and partying, but then I get there and I'm like, ah, I'd rather be in my bed. Well, on a cruise ship, I can go to the nightclub and stay there as long as I want. And in five minutes, I can be in my bed, you know, right. or I can go to a right. comedy show or I can go to a Broadway show or I can go to whatever you know whatever's on board that interests me and, uh, and then not, obviously I'm excursions it. i'm not trying to glamorize it because cruising isn't for everybody some people absolutely hate it and i get why they hate it but i like being on ships at sea so i really like cruising as a form of travel right the excursions are obviously extra whatever you choose to do once you step off the ship yeah, but if, right? yeah. but if you're getting onboard credit i mean i usually get between five hundred to nine hundred dollars a cruise onboard credit and so i can take like i'm taking an excursion in astoria because i'm a huge fan of the movie goonies and it goes to all uh -huh. the movie it goes to all the movie sets in astoria and so instead of trying to figure out that myself I, i'm just taking an excursion and my onboard credit will pay for it so if you plan your cruises correctly you're going to get so much onboard credit that even when you spend money on board it's gonna be. It's gonna come off your onboard credit. It's not gonna cost you that much more over your cruise fare. If you're doing one or two cruises, you're gonna have those extra expenses. But if you're like making cruising a lifestyle, you'll figure out all these tricks on getting onboard credit. And you, I don't spend any money. I just did an expense report last month. Like I don't spend any money um, on board. Even though I drink five dollar coffees every day and I go out and I do stuff and I, I do. You know, I don't limit myself or anything like that. So, oh, so, I had a great hey, I, question I, I have for a, you. I, I've got one oh. real quick. Ke Kevin, would you recommend, we're talking about excursions, would you recommend people taking the cruise excursion or would you recommend them doing a third-party excursion? Yeah, so, the, to, to be, but by the way, I love listening to your interview. Uh, it was great hearing it from, like, you know, I'm a cruise passenger perspective, or cruise passenger, and then I was in the Navy, which is different than, 
and uh, life on a cruise ship as someone who works on there. So it was interesting hearing your perspective, by the way. I was, I was, it was really cool to catch that. Um, but to answer your question, so I do three things when I, when I pull into a port. Um, I'm the kind of person that really doesn't like the excursions because I don't like having people have control over my time. If right. the excursion sucks, you're kind of stuck there. And I've had some excursions <laughs> suck. So yeah, I'll usually look there. at the excursions <laughs> and see if there's anything that really like appeals to me. Like that Astoria one where they're going to all the Goonie movie set stuff. I went ahead and booked that one. I was like, I'll just book that one. Um, and I booked some snorkeling stuff. Those have been pretty successful in, in the past. Uh, those have worked out pretty well for me. That was the I hotel general the, manager that just went oh, by, I've, by the way. Um, I, I know I know somebody on board that's working on that ship right now, so I'll okay. wait till we go off the camera so you can go him him up because he lives here in Thailand as well. Oh, very cool. Yeah, tell yeah. him to come up and say hi. Um, <laughs> so what? I, that's the first. The, the, I'll look and see what the ship has. But what I really do is I jump on YouTube and I go watch videos on people who have been to that port and didn't take an excursion and and what to do in that port. And I actually made a bunch of videos about like what to do in ports. Sometimes I'll get off the ship, like in Costa Rica, for example, I got off the ship and there was a guy that that would take you to see um, the sloths. They have the three toed and the two toed sloths in Costa Rica. And I was like, yeah, why not? And I paid 20 bucks for it. And it was great. It was a personalized tour. It was just me and a guy. And he took me, you know, out into the jungle and said, there, there's some sloths. <laughs> and, like, and like even That's went awesome. up and like pulled one off the tree and stuff. I like get, they don't bite or anything. So, and, uh, but yeah, that, so you can do, I, I would recommend that most people just walk off the ship and figure out stuff to do. But if you're like, if you want to see something specific, like you want to see the sloths of a country or you want to go on some kind of food tour, then um, look at what the ship offers, but then jump on Viator and see if you can get it for cheaper. Because a lot of times the exact same things that are on the cruise ship, Viator has is the exact same cruise company, and you can just get it off the cruise ship. The only thing that I will warn you, sorry I'm going so long, but it's a complicated question. The only thing I'll warn you about is if you're on a tour that you got through the cruise ship and you get late coming or you're late coming back to the ship, the ship will wait for you. So if something happens and you get delayed, but if you're on your own thing and it gets delayed, uh, there's a flat tire out in the middle of Costa Rica or something, and you're late, the ship will leave without you. But they will wait for you or get you to the next port if you're on their tour. That oh. even if it's even if it's not their company or whatever, you're, you're fine. Is, but if you're on the your own tour, you're, are the prices you're, about the same tour. going? Are the prices about the same, like you said, or no. you save a lot of money they're, going on that? App? Like, like that that uh, sloth tour I was telling you about, I would have booked it on board and got pretty much the same experience. It would have been like 120 bucks, and I got it for 20 bucks. Whoa. Yeah, it's, wow. it's, 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 okay. But you get that security with, with animals, it. I, it's going to cost you more. Yeah, it, there, like, like Kevin was saying, I asked that because there's a real big story going around right now of a, a group of eight that was left uh, on an island. They had a tender, and they were left there. By one of the uh, by Norwegian cruise lines left them on the island because that they had a breakdown on the bus, and they tried to pull the sympathy card through the media, and people are ripping them like you knew better, you should have been at the ship on time, and I'm going get them, get them. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, well, let's, let's, Norwegian cruise, they're not going to wait for them. Well, yeah. let's talk it about that. One of their tours. I'm interested in this a little bit of. I, I hate to bring a little bit of gloom. But it's interesting yeah. having you both here, right? Because it's two very interesting perspectives. <clears throat> People going overboard on ships, right? Is that some? I've I've heard before that it's not uncommon. Is it something? I mean, does, does I mean does that happen on every like on every cruise? Does that happen? Uh, not somebody? every cruise. I, I let me knock on wood. Kevin, have you had a overboard since you've been on uh, on? I I haven't had one. Never, uh, we, never seen I, an over. It would be really hard to fall off a cruise ship. You'd have to really try. I mean, even right here, where I'm standing, if I if I went over right there, I would I would hit a balcony. You have to be like to to go off a cruise ship and end up in the water. You you have to really 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 try. Like it has to be like right. I'm trying to go overboard. 
You're not like when I was in the Navy, people would get blown off aircraft carriers because we have jets taking off. So it wasn't common. It wasn't uncommon for people to fall off a Navy ship and go overboard. But I have never seen that on a cruise ship. It is so hard to fall off of a cruise ship and end up in the water. There's just it just be really now, hard. You you need to sorry for my anyway. ignorance there. Uh, well, ninety percent of the balconies in here you can't jump yeah. off of and end up in the water. So, mm. There's there's two incidents where you get a um, an mob a man overboard. It's either the person was very drunk, and they assing around, and then what is not talked about on the news a lot of times it's suicide. Um, yeah. You'll get people will get a terminal illness, and they'll do a bucket list cruise, and they go out there and they have a good time, and they just get to thinking too much, and they're like, hell, the end is near anyways. And they just go over. Makes well, our life a lot easier when they write a note. But hey, it's not hey, always the case. Hey, if you're gonna go out, go out with a splash. With a splash hey, yeah. <laughs> here's what I here's what is common though. Here's what I will tell you. So I'm on Princess Cruises, which has which notoriously has an older demographic on board, which I don't mind. I actually enjoy it because I always say, like, I don't I don't not like kids, I just don't like them on my cruises. <laughs> and Princess doesn't have a lot of kids because it's geared towards an older demographic. They don't have like go kart tracks and rock climbing walls and all that stuff on Princess. So families don't really come on board Princess. It's mostly older people, and it, probably probably fifty percent of the cruises I've been on, someone has passed away on the cruise. Whoa! And mm -hmm. like I've seen it multiple times, like in cabins near me. So I'm assuming it's happening even more than that. Because yeah, yeah. I'm only on one floor, and I know when someone has passed away on the yeah. floor. But there's people on the cruise ship that are in their hundreds, you know. So I, I, I work on a, uh, I work on a cruise a cruise line just like Kevin's. In fact, uh, Princess is our sister company, um, and it's got a very, it's got an older demographic than Princess. I know exactly which one you're talking about then, especially since you said it's with who, what parent company it is. Yeah. So. You'll have the same demographic, except ours was. It's getting a little younger. Like the the average age is like fifty seven now instead of seventy seven, and but you'll have people like Kevin that stay on such a long time, and they actually will sit there and they go back to back to back cruises and they all get the, and so they'll sit there on embarkation day and they're looking and they'll start a Deadpool. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, guys, because I talk to the guests and I'm like, for real, they're like, all oh, that right there in the walker she's trying too hard she should be in a wheelchair she should be in a motorized wheelchair she's trying too hard she's going to give out now all this walking's going to get her and i'm going oh come on guys come on ease up a little bit i don't need this so yeah you guys see the question there uh how often do you see refugee refugees in boats or little shanty it's, boats it's, or it's not it, well if you see them you're going to get a distress signal and the captain is going to go pick them up uh we we have protocols uh in place for that but um, it's it's not as often as you would think. It's the only reason why it seems often, and everybody's saying it is, is because that's what you see on the news. Someone goes overboard, it makes national news. You pick up a refugee, it makes national news. Uh, so that's why it sticks yeah. out in your mind because it's just flooded in. But it's you got to realize how many. If you go on like CruiseMapper.com and see how many ships are out there at all times and going around it, it's a bunch because i'll usually use that to attract the other ships in and around this now yeah it's can just I like flying yeah like oh go ahead I, I have another question for you and it was a special request by your good friend gary from peaky blinders gary wants to know as he was very specific on this and I'm going to try to dance around the question since it's kind of PG or PG-13. How easy is it for you to pick up on women on a cruise ship? Because I can't answer that because I'm in a toll. Like, I can't have any type of those relations with guests. I lose my job immediately right away. It, it's yeah. over with. So he, he wanted to know, how are you making out uh, with the female uh, persuasion? Literally yeah, making I mean, So there's, there's always... Um... So on cruise ships, they always have solo meetups. So the solo cruisers go meet up. And to be honest with you, more solo women cruise than solo men. So when you're a solo man cruising, you actually, like, there's a lot, you have a lot uh, to pick from uh, if you want to 
you know, have a boat boo is what we used to call it in the Navy. I, I have a question. Um, a lot of people, and a lot of people are looking for that. Like they're coming on a cruise and mm -hmm. they want to let their hair down. It doesn't happen as much on princess that happens because it's an older demographic. Right. So if, if I was on, when I, you know, I've, I've cruised carnival and NCL Norwegian, which Norwegian has a huge solo cruise demographic because they have solo cabins on board. And on that one, it's really easy to date and meet people. Um, so, so I would say it's no different than anywhere else, except for more women cruise solo than men because they just feel safe traveling that way, where a lot of men will travel anyway and also are anti-cruise ship. So as a solo guys, male, you actually, there's the law of averages works in your favor. For a guy like you, would it be the same talent pool as Soy 6? <laughs> no, it's definitely not. No. Soy, it's definitely not soy sorry, six. Sorry, on, sorry. On Carnival I, I, Cruise Line, on Carnival Cruise Line, it would be like Soy Six. It'd be like yeah. Soy Six, but not on Princess. For the old guy though, or for the young guys and the young people. I, I, I've been at cruise. You know, it's. I don't yeah. think those girls. Well, are oh, Greeny, we, we just know that Ditch and Corporate just did a cruise. What about six months ago? And he really? said it was. Oh, well, you remember he did that long one through the Med, then went across and did the transatlantic. Oh, yeah. And, and that's a really good-looking guy there. Yeah, well, and uh, we know that was a swing and a miss. <laughs> Come on, no. he's, he's, he's got mad, mad rapping skills. There's no doubt about it. Oh, uh, what is the easiest to sneak booze on? I found that at Port Stop. Sometimes you can just walk right on. Oh crap! Let's see if I can uh, let in I'll some industry. You don't get in trouble. All right, go for it. <laughs> so, not Number, I don't even drink, but I have friends that that don't want to spend the crazy prices they have to spend. And so what they do is they just get water bottles and fill it up with whatever their favorite drink is. And it works out really well if it's something that looks like water. So uh, that's, a, that's a way to do it. A lot, like I always bring, because um, I don't like paying the $5 a coffee. I don't like using my onboard credit. So I go and get coffee creamer and I've never had an issue bringing it on board. Most cruise lines will let you bring soda on board so you don't have to pay five bucks a soda if you don't yeah, have a drink bro. package. But a lot of people will just get the drink package so they don't have to worry about it and you can just drink all you want. So then bringing booze on board isn't an, an issue. I get a free mini bar set up every cruise because of my status, which is pretty easy to get on most cruise lines. So most cruise lines at some point, you'll be getting free alcohol anyway. But I, I've heard of people like bringing vodka in water bottles because they'll let you bring water bottles on board and stuff like that. So if that, if you really look into penny pinch, like you could do that. Hmm. This question here I can answer because when I took my cruise from Singapore to Phuket, I didn't go back to Singapore cause I'm already back in Thailand. I didn't want to go back to Singapore and you know, the, the, and that was like an extra day at sea too. I didn't want to, you know, I just wanted to make the stops and, and come back home. So I was the only one, you know, you know, my party, we were the only people that um, were getting off early there that, that, that left and didn't go back. And it was a whole big thing. I had to go down and meet with the Thai immigration and I was the only person there. And it was a whole big ordeal, but it can be done. Have you, if you guys had any yeah. experience with that? Yeah. yeah. It, it, and to answer that question directly, I'm going to use the thing. It depends 98 to 99% of the time you'll be able to get off on the thing and basically do a deviation of schedule. I say it depends because it depends on who you are, what's your nationality, and what's the country, and it all depends on immigration and customs. Right. Sometimes, and I have a question. Customs, sometimes customs isn't set up at that port to actually review, you know, because once you get off, you have to go through to uh, through customs. Sometimes they don't have a custom set up, like if it's a tender port or something of that, to actually screen your luggage once you hit the port. So. Uh, customs at that port would tell us as the crews, no, don't let that person with his bags off. So, um, like I said, depends, but 98, 99% of the time you will, they'll, they'll accommodate you. Have you guys, yeah. when I took the cruise out of Singapore, when you go on, they take your passport. That was the first time they ever did it. And they hold it because places like Thailand, the people that were coming on the immigration come in. And I think they want the credit for every visitor that comes on a cruise ship. Like it was yes. a tourist to that country. So they, yeah. They didn't actually stamp the passport, but they put a uh, a piece of paper and stamped the paper in every single person's Ooh. passport. Now, is yeah. that is that happening to you, Kevin? Are they holding your passport like in North America, South America? 
No, I've never. No. I, I've, I've, been, I've traveled all across the world except for Asia. I was supposed to be in Asia, but I had to cancel it to take my mom on a trip. But all I've never had them take my passport and hold it in any country that I've been to. And I've Not sailed the country, all over the, the world ship, this year. The ship, the ship so, itself. Does the ship yeah, hold just, your passport? Uh, no, the ship's never held my passport. Okay. Uh, yeah, I know I've that, never had that happen. I know it. I, I've heard of it happening in other places. Yes. But as a U.S. passport holder, a lot of places are visa on arrival anyway. So I think maybe that has to do with it. Maybe someone who's on board that's from another country maybe has to. Um, but I guess all the places I've been to, I'm assuming must have had visas on arrival. Um, Come to or, Singapore. They'll take it. Yeah. Will you? Yeah, take no. it. No, Just to we jump were... in on that question. So uh, two, two answers to that, because I think he might have been asking a different question. So uh, to piggyback on what those guys said, like on my next cruise when we're going to Hawaii, I know a big group of people that are actually – it's a, it's a round trip from Vancouver to Hawaii, but I know a big group of people that are actually getting off in Hawaii because they want to fly to Asia. That's actually what I probably should have done. But um, So I know a big group of people that are doing that, and they just worked it out with the cruise line. Sometimes you have to actually have to pay extra to do that, even though you're only on half the cruise. And mm -hmm. I think they had to pay a little extra to be able to do that. This, this, oh. What I think he's really asking is, instead of flying, is like, is there an alternative? So all the cruise lines do home port shifts. Um, and so like, let's say like I was actually supposed to go to Asia on a cruise ship, but I ended up having to do some stuff with my mother and around, um, around August, September and October on the West coast, all the cruise line ships that were doing Alaska will go over to Australia or Japan or Asia. And so you can hop on a cruise. Actually, I think that's the time of year. Maybe not. Yeah, around there. They'll go over to, to, to there. So you can do that instead of flying. And then around March time frame, like when I actually, Mar March, sometimes even earlier, when I'm in Asia, there's a, there's a carnival cruise and a princess cruise that leaves Singapore in September that gets off, that ends in L.A., so if I wanted to, in October, I can hop on the Carnival Cruise, which I think is 2500 bucks, and it's like a 30-day cruise, and the Princess Cruise, which I think is about 4500 bucks, but it's like 35 days. And I could do that instead of flying. So it, it's about as much as a business class ticket, and you don't get the jet lag. And they do the same thing from Florida. When hurricane season hits, a bunch of ships will go through the Panama Canal over to this side, or they'll go to Europe. And then there's right. ships in Europe that will go through the Suez Canal to Dubai. And so you can, if you plan your travel, you can do it without ever flying and use cruise ship travel instead of flights. And a lot of times the cruises, the transatlantic, transpacifics, sometimes they get really, really cheap. Like you can find them for under a thousand bucks and they'll get you from California to Asia or Australia. And wow. so that's, I think that's what he was asking was, are there any like one way cruises where you can start yeah, somewhere right. and, and end up somewhere else definitely about this time of year when do a reposition because i joined my ship in fort lauderdale in the next couple week or about a, in fact about another week and as soon as i get on we reposition straight over to rotterdam yeah well that and you're so your company because i just know your co what who your company <laughs> is your company has some of the coolest cruises they go from like they'll start at fort lauderdale go all down South America, Bold then they'll pole. go around the Horn, they'll go mm -hmm. down to Antarctica, and then they'll come back the other side and go to like Chile, Peru, yeah, and I then just got off that one. in San Francisco. So uh, you, can take, you, you can go from Fort Lauderdale, go to Brazil, Argentina, Antarctica, you know, hit that bucket list, seventh continent or whatever, yep. and then go up the other side and end up in LA and you really like, you basically went from the U.S. to the U.S., so yeah, it's a, it, that's it's, a great um, cruise. Yeah, that one, and then you have the other ship that I just got off of. We we repositioned out of the Med, went to Fort Lauderdale, went through and hit the ABC Island, went through the canal, uh, home ported out of us, uh, um, San Antonio, Santiago, went around the Horn, um, went into Buenos Aires, you know, stops along the way, hit up um, uh, the big island, not the big island, the one that everybody, the, uh, shit, I forget the damn island with all the penguins on it. Um, 
the British island that they had the war over in 1980 Fal with the Falklands? Falklands. Falklands. We were in the Falklands, so we made the Falklands. Uh, luckily, usually weather their ship, we made every single port of call there. It was beautiful. Uh, That's awesome. And then we dipped down to Antarctica for five days over Christmas. And so, yeah, what he's saying, and, and that's what my company's kind of known for. It was always an older crowd. And, of course, they do or they around the world. I got to see the 2025 where they're going to do the pole to pole. Uh, they do Amazon. That's why someone was saying, oh, look, they're doing you, you got your YouTubers out there saying, oh, look, so-and-so's in there. And I said, we've been in the Amazon. We've been going up the Amazon River because I talked to some of the other crew members that said, hey, if you ever get up the Amazon, do this, get off and do this. It's really cool. And I was like, oh, yeah, that, that would yeah. be nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you, well-rounded. Uh, yeah. I think that means uh, like a do $5 donation or something. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah. – uh, what he's saying is, is uh, uh, what is best cruise to get a woman for a date asking for a friend? What is the best cruise to get a um, – the one that's out of Bangkok. <laughs> NCL. I, I would say – I'd say Norwegian Cruise Lines. It's a – it's a you got all ages on there, and they have the best solo cruise program. So there's a bunch of solos on there. And what, they have, uh, every night they have, like, 80s dance night, 90s dance night. Like, there's always, like, events going on, and there's – there's there's always uh, single women that are letting their hair down that are looking for you know a boat boo. So I, I still stand by mine. It's going to be the river cruise in Bangkok. Yeah, I would imagine. I've never done the ones out of Asia. I would imagine those are great too. Yeah. No, no, just the one you just That's right the there. Show, the the Chow Prayana uh, cruise. Yeah. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Any uh, special perks, Kevin, that you didn't mention before? Any other perks that you're, you know, I know you, you get all kinds of points, so you get, you know, your coffees and excursions yeah. and different the internet. Uh, any Anything else that we didn't think of before? Well, I always tell people, like, go to all the different cruise lines loyalty programs and look which ones have things that you value. Some things you might not value. And some, things, some, some things you might value more than others, like Royal Caribbean, for instance, very quickly you'll get to what's called diamond status. And at that status, you get four free drinks a day. And that's alcohol, coffees, whatever you want. And then as you move up, you can build up to six free drinks a day. So then that takes a huge expense off your cruise. On, on Royal Caribbean or on uh, Princess and on the cruise line um, that – uh, the other guest sales on. I, I don't know. What is your first name? Brian. Brian. Oh. Brian. I, for, I forgot your first name. I'm terrible with names. Um, but uh, the, his does the same thing. They have laundromats on board. And so on board, the, since I'm living on a cruise ship, laundry is important to me. And so I get free laundry that I can send away or I can go down to the desk and I can get free tokens for the laundromat and do my laundry for free. So I get free laundry. That's kind of a big deal for me because I'm living on the cruise ships. That might not be a big deal for other people. They might want the free right. drinks instead. I get half price internet, which is nice on this cruise line. Um, on Royal Caribbean, They at a certain level, they give you 50% off booking cruises solo. So that's a big benefit. Um, so yeah, I, I would say just look at the different cruise lines and figure out what benefits they give that you value because they're all different to be honest with you what about uh uh this one is there is there a fee for room service depends or depends on the ship yeah now okay. i think what he's talking about and and i know what a lot of people base their experience off of is uh carnival because it's one of the most popular ships in the um in the gulf area and all around america and it's one of the most affordable what happened was, is they were getting inundated, absolutely inundated with uh, room service requests. So they actually had to start charging a, a service charge for it because people were just doing it because they could. And so yeah. it was just ruining it for everybody else. And it was backing up, it was taking hours. Once they started charge, uh, charging people, it went down to a moderate level. Uh, yeah. My ships still do... Um, um, room service. You can hang it on your little door hanger the night before and say if you want the continental breakfast, this, that, whatever it is. They give you a little door hanger. You just hang it there and your steward comes by, grabs it, and turns it over to the galley and your food will arrive the next day. Yeah. Um, as far as the airline thing, I, I booked my last cruise that I went on through United Cruises and I got 
points and I guess I can use it for lights or United cruises. So there is some cross cross promotions there. Um, any other airlines or credit cards or anything that do that? I mean, I'm a chase Sapphire reserve guy. So if you, when you book cruises on chase Sapphire reserve, you get the three points. And so I just fly everywhere for free because of that. So right. I, I don't, yeah, I, just, I don't book, I don't book cruises anymore. They, yeah, they, they, bring with, they, book, <laughs> they book me now. <laughs> right, right. We covered the uh, nude earlier. Any, anything else to add, Ryan? Well, they, so, you know, the next yeah, nude cruise, are you going to partake? If or? you Google it, you can find that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They they, have they have and, then, and then Virgin Virgin Cruises, by the way, is adults only. And so right. it just tends to attract a more, like, wild adult crowd. Not like car, not like Carnival, like, uh, but a, a little, like, if you're into an alternative lifestyle, you'll probably find yeah. that on Virgin. Well, they have Virgin. a, they have a sexologist on the ship. <laughs> yeah, you can find... Just Google the, that kind of cruise and you'll find it. Yeah. <laughs> have uh, Have you seen any yes. pineapples on the door? Any doors walking around, uh, Kevin? <laughs> oh, explain always, that. I'm always, at, I'm always curious about it. So, on a, yep. for those who don't know, on a cruise ship, if you an upside down pineapple on the door means that the people in that cabin are swingers, and it's just a universal symbol. I don't even know why it's like it's not even a secret thing anymore because everybody knows about it. So. Yeah. But, What's a big running joke now is is you'll actually have people go by and put it on their friends' doors. Um, where my cabin was, I was kind of secluded off, and I was staying around other other. I was staying. I was in the medical wing on one of the ships, so I was right by the doctors. Well, when you rounded the corner, one of the nurses she had a pineapple on her door and she was walking out of her room and I just gave her one of those looks. She was like, uh, uh-uh, it was on that door before I got this cabin. Don't even think about it. I said, ah, man, I'm looking at her. Like I, I, I wouldn't want to do anything with you anyways. <laughs> you, know, you, you old bag. <laughs> but it's uh, yeah. Yeah. But people right. like to go around and actually stick them on other people's door. Like if I was on a cruise with you, Greeny, I would have a pineapple stuck to your door on the first night. I'm sure. So, if I had my own room, like, can, can you signify, like, how do they know what sex the person is in the room to come that they want to swing? Or is it usually couples in a room that want to swing with another? Oh, I, I mean, I don't get it. I'm princess, the, 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 your name's on the door. Your first name okay. is on the door. On the little, there's a, like a digital, your name. I right. mean, so you can figure it out that way. The smartest thing that Princess ever did is they actually had um, CEOs from Disney come over, or they had some executives like Kevin can probably tell you about the little little medallion. They basically ripped Disney's medallions. He's yeah. got it probably right there on his key ring, and it almost looks like an Air, Apple Air tag. And basically, when you walk up to your to your door, the door will unlock for you, and it's it's your stuff. So Princess was ahead of the curve. They they really did did a good job on that i Plus, think that yeah if, if uh, i order room like if i order something right now with this medallion they can find me anywhere on the ship yeah. so even though i'm on this side area where like nobody's at if i ordered a a um, a corona right now in like five minutes someone would bring it to me because they can find me with this wow yeah. wow that's awesome yeah. and you can yeah. track your friends technology. and family with this too if you want to if you give someone right. access to you like Let's say you got like, like when I brought my mom on a princess cruise, I brought her on a transatlantic cruise. I can, I connected on the phone with her so I could see where my mom was. So I, I knew like I, I could go find her on the ship. Pretty soon we'll all have those implanted into our skin. Just so what Kevin's saying is he's walking down the hallway with his phone, gets to a room where he sees his mom that saw the pineapple on the door and said, I yeah, that, going back to that would have been a nightmare. <laughs> I knew someone was going to say something. My mom was usually at knitters and natters, if you know what that is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure your cruise line has knitters and natters. <laughs> they have all sorts of stuff. And the most awkward conversation I have to get in with the guests because – a lot of the painting and the stuff like that on the last ship I was on was right by the cafe. So if you wanted a good cup of coffee or, you know, me, I'd go get a Coke Zero. I'd go up there and the art class was always letting out. And it looked like finger painting from a five-year-old. You ever seen five-year-olds bring something home? Then you got to realize the ship's rocking and they're trying to do these little crafts and painting. And I'd get on the elevator and I'd look and I'd say, oh, that looks so nice. 
Are you going to take that home with you? And I almost like feel like they're like, oh, yeah, I'm taking this home and giving it to my kids. And I'm going, Jesus, they're going to be so happy to have that. That lady's like 70 something. I want to be like, it looks like a finger painting from a five year old. <laughs> it's bad. But God bless them. Hey, they pay the bills. So that's living their best life. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming on. I mean, I don't read about where are we at right now? Almost an hour and a half. I'm sure uh, Kevin's got some better things he wants to do. Yeah, I'm going to go get off the ship here. Part of my art is like being in L.A., though. It's like there's like a Walmart right next to me. Yeah, <laughs> really? Walmart. So, all right, any final uh, parting words or questions? Ben, you got another one more question? or? or... No, look, I thought, no, I thought that was cool. I, did, I had no idea about the pineapple thing, though. <laughs> now you're now you're gonna look for him every time you go to cruise. No, I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm good with the. No, you'll just see him. Now you know you will see him as soon as you see one on a door. You'll be like, some, some no, old guy it. told me about that right. when I first started cruising. So, yeah. well, I should probably make the statement real quick. You know, if anybody thinks they have, you know, I have a few emails. I have to get back to a few people that 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 expressed interest in being a guest. But you know, anything that has to do with travel or retirement. Or you know, financial planning for retirement, Social Security, Medicare, uh, you know, not even things from America. If there's similar things from you know Britain or Australia, if there's any guests that feel like they can add something to the program, just shoot us an email. Um, you can shoot it at greenytravels at gmail.com or what's this other one we get here? Uh, I think the Greeny Travels one's the one to use. It's easier. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. easier. Oh, uh, and then if you, if, you, if you have to write it, if you can't remember, Greeny Travels at Gmail. We also have Breakaway Abroad Podcast at Gmail. But I'll probably remove that and put Greeny Travels. just easier, I guess. So, anyways, thanks, guys. I guess we'll wrap yeah, it up thank now. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate that. And thank you, Kevin. That was very nice of you to join us, man, with that lovely location in the background. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, the birds. Did you see the birds? You couldn't see the birds, Kevin, but there was huge birds flying around behind you. Oh, I'm like, I saw those right at the start. Oh, wow. Yeah. That <laughs> was okay. amazing. Incredible. That's yeah, cool. So check, check your shoulders. Make sure there's no white stuff on them because <laughs> they, they were flying all no, around okay. you. I'm You're good. good. Ryan, okay. thank, you, thank you so much for joining as well, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, that was that. really interesting in awesome. that perspective. Oh, Ryan, give your uh, – Ryan's going to be having a travel – podcast too soon we're, right? we're trying to get uh it, me and robbie from walking in my shoes we're trying to start a uh, podcast um doing beyond borders not as detailed into this more of like man stuff you know that joe grogan style and he's you know a van life guy i'm of course on the ships so we're trying to get all the logistics ironed out and a lot of the equipment but there's a good possibility that we might do some podcasts because we won't be able to go live uh, with my work schedule, maybe a podcast or two while I'm on the ship and he's in the van and giving that perspective back and forth and talking about everything from A to Z. So, and, and if you could tell, that's what I signed in on today. We've got like literally just started it up like a couple days ago and still trying to iron through all the details, which would be uh, beyond borders podcast on um, right here. And of course we got the beyond borders podcast on TikTok and, We'll be on all the platforms. We'll give uh, and, Breakaway uh, Abroad a good run for their money and keep them honest. Yeah, right. We don't. And uh, Kevin, your uh, YouTube channel, Thirty and a Wake Up. Yep, same as always. I'll be in yeah, Thailand. Awesome. I'll be in Thailand for thirty or sixty days because I know a lot of your audience is loves Thailand. I'll be in Thailand for sixty days, getting a bunch of dental work done uh, in May, and then I'm going over to Kuala Lumpur for two months. Wow. And okay. then Philippines for two months. Wow. So you're going to just keep, keep go back to the uh, kind of the travel thing that you started. That's kind of how you started. Then you did van life for a year. Then you did Thailand for a year. Then now you're cruising for like a year and a half. Then are you ever going to yeah. sit still for a minute and just uh, go home man, at all? Or you're just done. Country you're just... Hop. I'm sitting still now. I'm on a damn cruise ship for a year. <laughs> That's not fixed. All right, it's guys. Like living in a resort, man. I mean, it's like, it's like living in a resort in Phuket for a year, to be honest with you. I'd like to try it. I think for, We'll see. But all right, guys. Thanks a lot. Adios, hey, guys, amigos. Adios see there, in, Kevin. See you in May. All right. Bye-bye. See you, Ryan. Thanks. Ben, adios. Adios. <laughs>